Hello. <laughs> it tickles me. It tickles me every time. Can you hear me? I think you can hear me, but there we go. <laughs> anyway, good evening and welcome to another Monday Night Live. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm Dean the Vaping Biker and uh, hopefully we'll be having a very special guest in a little while. But uh, no, first off, it's a uh, it's it's just a, a little bit of a chat, as we always do. Now, for the first few minutes, as always, what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, just say hello to a few people in chat. So, if you're watching this on catch up or replay, then uh, then just skip skip ahead. 10 minutes just fast forward that baby and uh, and away we go and then we can uh, get stuck in so yes let's say hello let me know who you are and where you're from it's always nice to get a little bit of that uh going on so then what we got going on steve okanivo bonjour how you doing darren james matthew hughes clean as fuck coils what's up to you my friend um uh mr dragulas hello from bosnia hello how you doing um special guest hype it's very exciting it's very exciting. Uh, <laughs> hello from Wigan, says the Clover. Sam Basda, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> I'm a little bit excitable tonight. I want your beard, buddy. You can't have it. It's all mine. And you don't. It's not that clever, to be fair. I should have should have tidied up a little bit for tonight. It's not brilliant, to be fair. But, you know, you have to make the best of what you've got, haven't you? <laughs> hey, Dean, what's up from Worcestershire? Hello, Will Clark. How you doing? Barry Miller. Hello, old beard, bearded one at yourself, you beast of a beard. Um, anyone that gets, like, super really good condition and straight and thick beards really upsets me and uh, young Barry is one of those people. So then what else we got going on from Nottingham? We've got Ben Mackhamson, Gareth Lynch. Hi, how you doing? Richard Medry from New Zealand. What's up, Dean from Norway? Hello, go, go, yeah, now look, go, go, goot, goat. Let's see if we go. I'm going to say that. Um, hi, Dean, talking to you from Belgium. Hello over there in Belgium. How are you doing? Um, What's going on? Oh, I'm just checking my stream status. Um, from Delaware. Hello, Steve Krolik in Delaware. How are you doing? I hope your weather is somewhat nicer over in America than it is over here in the UK at the moment. What's going on? Uh, not a great deal. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Washington State, Nate LeBlanc. Uh, good day from Bath. Hey, how you doing? Whoop, that chat just went Fucking whoosh. Hello um, <laughs> from Budsy and Lead. Sorry if I missed you out right there. Um, uh, <laughs> it's the chat. Can't keep up with it tonight. Um, what have we got? Wales. Uh, Froti. How you doing? Rob Fisher, South Africa. Um, from Preston in the UK is Mark 7247 and lots of numbers. Um, Dave Mottram is in the house. Hello, David. How you doing? Thanks very much for joining me. Um, uh, what's up, Dean? From the States, K KY, Kentucky. I imagine that KY is Kentucky rather than the gel, I imagine. Um, good day, Dino. It's me, the, the question-filled Swede. All right, Bjorn, how are you doing? Um, Schwarzy, hello, Schwarzy. We're going to be getting back to some written reviews on vapingbiker.co.uk soon, so be aware of that one. And uh, you never know, I might even be able to convince Mr. Schwar to come and, uh, and let you guys know a little bit about him at some point in time on camera. Anyway. Evening from somewhere between Bristol and Gloucestershire, says Graham Vincent. <clears throat> W. Brian Jackson from New York. Um, hello from Russia, says Sergey. Sergey, Privet. Is that hello? Privet. Kakdala. I think. I think that should be hello. Are you okay? Um, <laughs> um, Sup, Bicker? says Albert Rodriguez. I'm all right. How are you doing? Um, the Troy Mo Sol from Minnesota. Um, Eddie Summerfield from Eastbourne working in London. You working? Oh, this time of night. That sucks balls. What else we got going on in here? Scotland, Perth um, from Gareth in Scotland. Ga oh, <laughs> just realized that it's Gareth and not from a place called Gareth in Perth, in Scotland. That would have confused me. Richard James Rushton, hey, from Norfolk. Norfolk's a bit nippy, isn't it? The whole UK literally just lost its shit over the last the last week because we had some snow, and it just... Pfft. Bearing in mind that the UK is known for crap weather 
and snow and cold and rain, we do, we can't cope. We can't cope with the seasons. I think we've finally evolved to that point of not being able to deal with summer, springtime, winter or autumn. We just anything that comes with them screws us big time. Um, screwdriver, scooter boy. Hello from Froggy Land over there at Bonjour. <laughs> um, what else have we got? Jay's vape reviews in the house, I believe. Wow, there's loads of you in in uh, chat. Have you put a coil in your lamp? What? Hmm. <laughs> zero idea what you're talking about <laughs> oh that that right there yes it's a big coil made of made of i don't know virgins <laughs> um, uh, was it snowing says paul re <laughs> just a little bit um evening dean from exotic new market always nice always nice always great vets in new market great vet in new market um hi dean greetings from the philippines hello v civ how you doing um laszlo says lots of things in a language that i can't read but hello to you <laughs> laszlo um good evening from budapest he says now, I don't know. I think YouTube are doing something where this chat is going to come up on the live stream as well, on the uh, on the replay as well. Don't know. Haven't tried it out. So this will be a learning experience for all of us when we uh, go back and look at this one. Hello from soggy Boston. Boston's a bit a bit damp anyway, isn't it? Or am I am I am I wrong there? I, I could be wrong. I don't really know. I don't really know. <laughs> Much about America, I've got to say. Um, Virgin coils are best, absolutely. Um, <laughs> hello from Squapeland, says Mace. Hello from Swi Switzerland. Switzerland. Um, what's up, Dean from Jersey, watching you while in traffic? Be safe. Be safe. <clears throat> I used to have a BMW that had a TV in the dash, and it was brilliant. But as soon as you went two miles an hour, it went, nah, fuck you, and went off, which, you know, I guess is fine for safety, but. <laughs> Um, uh, what else have we got going on here? Who are the oh, Brazilian man in London, Rafael Costa? How are you doing? Uh, Nova Scotia, Canada, Terry Rogers. Hello, Terry. Ter Terry, if you're in Canada, if you're not drink uh, drinking, <laughs> no, if you're not vaping, Vapor Junkies Northern Syrup, there's something wrong here because that is absolutely glorious. And that's over there, I think. Um, hey, Dean from Chile, Cambridge. All right, Daniel Carter Sewell. How are you doing? Um, from Egypt, so we've got oh, hi. Hi, 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 let's go with Hytham Sharkas, I think, maybe. I could be horribly, horribly wrong there, but we'll, you know, maybe. Um, Chile, Tennessee is Shell Logan. Uh, David Parr, yes, caught a live one, yes. <laughs> it's very exciting. It's not really. It's not really. <laughs> um, watching you from New Zealand. All right, Paul Collins, how are you doing? Dieter Pumberger. Burger. Hi, folks. Greetings from Germany. And hello to you, sir. Um, hello from Zimbabwe. I love... Oh, we've got Honolulu, Hawaii as well from Kevin K. Zimbabwe was Euphigenia. Let's go with that. <laughs> Hands damp. Hello, Hans. How you doing from Frankfurt? Dean, you're worldwide? Apparently so, Steve. I love it. I love hearing about where you guys are all from because it's... I mean, it. it I guess it's because I'm old, okay? But I remember about 1998 when I was kind of putting together my first kind of extra extra memory or extra storage into a into a into a PC tower and made it like 256k. It was a bollocks. I thought I was the business dial up modems and all that. And the fact that you could chat there was a was it plenty of fish dot com or something like that. And there used to be some chat rooms in there, and you could see someone in America as they were typing. So you, you know it, the actual words would come, and it blew me away then. And this sort of stuff it still blows me. Away. Way. And I think it's because I'm old, possibly a little bit stupid, but the very fact that people watch all around the world just blows me away. I think it's fantastic. Um, hi, Dean from Bognor Regis is almost the mid. Well, mm, is it though, Jeff? Is it? Is it really? Um, hello from Dubai. Hello, Max Jackson. Love your videos. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Very kind of you. Um, uh, not really, says you. I'm from Beaver. Okay. <laughs> vape geek is in icq that was the one vape geek that was the one i remember that was the kitty <laughs> that was amazing um uh, hi dean shout out from south africa all right abdaddy how you doing shout out to you sir um you're not just old you're just experienced absolutely i uh, well aged 
Should we go with that one? Should we go with that one? Um, hey, from Berkshire. Hello there, Gucci FPV. David March 2006 with the year. I discovered the internet's not been right since. Ah, you see, I was, mm, it was a bit of a toughie for me because I think it was, I think it was about 98. I seem to remember 98 was around about that time. I had my first house and, and I, I thought, you know, I was the business. I was the bee's knees back then. Um, and then just turned into an idiot later on in life. Gareth Lynch, uh, Dean Vapor Michael loved the Death Trap RDA review. Thank Thank you so much indeed. And boom. Hey, got, ladies and gentlemen, the special guest in the house, Mr. Grim Green Bonjour Grim. Wow. Was that just really good timing? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Uh, hashtag professional, you know. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Good. I'm doing good. Doing real good. How are you, man? I'm excellent. I'm surprisingly awesome. perky. I think I've, it's just because I've got a new coffee machine for the studio. So I've been having hardcore, like Colombian bastard coffee all good. afternoon. And I'm a little <laughs> bit excitable. Good. <laughs> Tell you the best thing ever. Get a coffee machine in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> make that a point. I have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I heard you've just you've just come off another show with, uh, with young Vinny. Yes. Um, ho hope that all went well. He's a lo lovely Great. man. Yeah, great guy. Great guy. Really on top of it. Uh, Dimitri was there as well. Excellent. It was, it was good. It was good chatting. Good, good times. Stuff. I, I, can't, I, don't, I can't cope with Dimitri at the minute with his hate of sketches because I quite like sketches. So. Well, that's okay. <laughs> no, he's a sweetheart, really. Um, he's great. <laughs> I'm so pleased you've come in reasonably early, and that's because um, mainly I haven't got much new stuff. I, I, I don't know how it's affected you with the, the Chinese New Year. Has has Chinese that finished? You just got a fuck ton come in, or are you waiting for that to happen? Uh, it started. It has started this week. <laughs> <laughs> the DHL is here. Uh, see, I was talking to Ruby Roo recently on our podcast, and we kind of treat Chinese New Year like a little bit of a holiday, yeah. you know? I was asked, Ruby, how was your Chinese New Year? Oh, good. How was your Chinese New Year? When you're not getting 8,000 <laughs> packages every single day of all this stuff, it's always a nice little break, but it's starting back up again. Absolutely. It's starting it back does, up again. It does make life so much nicer when you do get that, just that little tiny break, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get a little break. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Have a little break. <laughs> Have a little holiday. Yeah. Have a little holiday. <laughs> So, what are you vaping on tonight, buddy? I've not told anyone what, what I'm using at the moment, and I've got a clear desk almost, which I'm very excited about. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've got a few things. This has been my thing lately, is mech, RDA. This is the Ronin competition mech. Um, I've just been evaluating it. Recoil Rebel and a glass dripper bottle. This is my new favorite thing <laughs> ever. I'm bringing this back in a big way. It's glass so much easier to drip with a glass dripper bottle than those dumb leaky chubby gorilla bottles that everybody uses that we, that I use that yeah. everybody uses, everybody wants them, but they leak. Uh, that's what I like. This is what I like. And this is a, a U.S. juice. This is hooch, hooch pure banana. Uh, and it's literally just a banana flavor, but it's, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful and creamy. Excellent. Oh, it's so good. And I love it. And I also have this thing. Did you get one of these? The og vape? Yes, man. I've uh, I did a review on it. I, I've 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 had mine for ages now. I did a review on yeah. it. I think it was last week. It's kind of a funky little thing, you know. It's a, a VTEC engine, yeah. Yeah, uh, apparently that's what I'm told. Is it looks like a VTEC engine? I'm yeah. not I'm not hip to cars or or Honda or anything like that. I I'm surprised how much I like this little thing. It's a nice little comfy little guy. Absolutely, and I, I can tell you when you did when you unboxed it on your vlog, you did exactly what I did when I unboxed it for my patrons, and yeah. I was looking at it going, "Well, how the fuck do you fire it? What's going?" On? <laughs> yeah, where's the button? Help, <laughs> help! And then when you discover it, you kind of go, "Oh, okay, that's kind of cool." Yeah, like that's, yeah. that's a kind of a cool button, little clicky button. But, but yeah, I have found myself pressing the other side a lot, expecting it to fire as well. I find myself uh, just pinching it to be safe. Like I'll press both sides because I'm not sure how I'm holding it. That's and I figure yeah. one, one side will click, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing. That's been great. I got the TM24 Pro Series on top. Smacks, Pony on Acid. It's, it's like my favorite juice ever. I just love it. And it's great. And that's what I'm vaping. Oh, and I got a little squonky guy, the spade. Oh, yes. Spade. How are you getting on yeah. with the spade? I love that. It's pretty great. Uh, I found I, I, my bottle leaks juice a little bit. Really? From, uh, from where it connects to the 
to the little connector, I, I get some juice residue like on this portion of the spade over here, like over on this side. Oh, weird. It just kind of appears there. And I don't know why. I don't know where it's coming from. But I'm constantly wiping it off there. Otherwise, yeah, it's a banging little squonker. And I love that they put this on the bottom for the battery so yeah. that you can loosen it and just pop the battery out. Yes. Great. Yeah. That's a great little thing. I have found thing. if you leave it for a while, because I, I didn't vape it for a little bit. I've got mine here, actually. I didn't vape it for a little bit. And um, and I think I'd had a little bit of juice or something on the inside from where I'd taken the bottle out previously. Sure, and sure. Somehow that I think the juice had moved over to the to the sort of the the, the thready bit. So I had to kind of like, you know, work it out and then take it oh, all apart and yeah, clean yeah. it and all that sort of crap. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise it's great. It's a great yeah. little great little mod. It's it feels pricier than it is, I think. It does. It feels nice. It feels real high quality. Definitely. Definitely high quality. What have yeah. you got on top of there? Uh, original recipe uh, recoil. Uh, I got to load it up with uh, Yig, which is our, our custard uh, flavor that I, mm -hmm. I just love. I just love it. I think it's great. And the last thing is my little uh, Wake Mod Co. Little Foot kit yeah. with the tank and the mod. I just like this little thing so much. Yeah, it's it, so great. I had one uh, uh, originally, and um, Andy brought one back. I think it was from was it from East? Yeah. Or I, I, I've had one anyway. And um, it, it was this was the only one that I've had, or the only thing that I've had that uh, went a bit weird. In as much as you do the five clicks to turn it off, and then one click would turn it on. However, they've sent me another one now, and that's there's no problems with that whatsoever. So huh. it, was, it was doing just a bit of a strange thing, but it's a heavy little sucker, isn't it? It is. It's a weighty little guy. It feels substantial to me. That's why I like it. It doesn't feel like it's just plastic. Yeah. You know, like there's some Chinese mods that have come out that are just pure plastic yeah. top to bottom and they feel, I don't know, flimsy or cheap a little bit. But this feels weighty. Yeah. It feels substantial, yeah. which I really like. Are you kind of, I mean, for me, it's one of those things It might be because I'm, I'm kind of more aged i don't know <laughs> yeah. when it comes to heavy stuff i think heavy stuff is good it's bound to be good yes. yeah I, I think the exact same way that's why i like tube mechs so much is because they feel yeah weighty they feel substantial and that's, unless you have an aluminium one and, and alley ones can be brilliant but they just i don't i can't i can't quite deal with them <laughs> yeah i don't like it i like this brass though that's good <laughs> yeah that's all i got Nice one. Well, tonight I am going on the uh, the Claymore mech, which uh, which needs a clean with the Wake oh. Mod Co RTA sitting on top of that. But this mech Good. is a um, is a little brass mech made in Scotland by a really nice bloke, and cool. uh, and I think it just because of this black ring it has on the bottom, I think that kind of matches the Wake stuff really, really nice. Yeah, so. that, ma that is very matchy. I yeah. approve of that matchy level. That is good. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm super happy with that that's going super well um that's going to be up for review in a little while um i know a load of people are talking in chat by the way i will uh, i will get to you and have a little look and answer questions and stuff in a little while so just bear with us for the minute um but on that i've got some uh, i've got some kind of homemade lemon tart juice going on i've got the uh there we go squid industries Oh, Double good barrel, choice 2.1 with good choice. The, uh, the pro series on the top of that bad boy that's got to be a great vape. Is that it just is. a great vape? Oh, it's it so is. good. It is. So I do good. think that the uh, the mod is ever so slightly underpowered, but I think it works really, really well. Yeah. I, I, and I mostly what I love about that mod is it's just wattage. Perfect. And I, I it reminds me of the noisy cricket. I like that size. I like yeah. that little double barrel size. I think it's I think it's real nice. Absolutely. And it's got that weight to it as well. Yeah, it does. It's Which, substantial. I think it's superb. Um, and in there, not that I'm sucking up to you, but you know. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah, cool, man. <laughs> Got some of that some bad of boy that going on. Nice. <laughs> and uh, and then finally, I'm on the uh, I'm on the DNA reference mod for the D with the new 250 C in oh, it yeah. using the replay yeah. function with the with the um Vandy Vape Berserker RDA going on. Have you had a play with that yet? I haven't. I'm sure it's in a package over here that I haven't opened up yet. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm sure it's there. I have not got to play with the DNA 25 or 250C yet. It's it's awesome. I did a, an interview on the channel with um, with Brandon uh, last week. Yeah, I think it was. yeah. 
Um, had a great time with that. But I, th th this is the first time that I've used the replay stuff with Mouse to Lung, and it seems to work really well. But oh. um, it's mind blowing. I think you're going to dig it a lot. Cool, cool. I know. Uh, Lost. I was talking to Lost Vape. They're releasing a 250C uh, mod that I hope I hope to be reviewing because I'm fascinated by the 250C. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a beast. I think the uh, I think the replay stuff is really really cool, and I'm I'm really excited because it's finally a bit of new tech that's not super complicated, and, right? You know, it's simple to use, but could be really really useful, not just for yeah. us, but for new starters and what have you as well. So that's really cool, and I've got some disc one kicking over in that one as well. But uh, no, there we go. That's what I'm vaping on at the moment. Uh, there's yeah. just one thing that I wanted to address from a kind of a a, a, a not an advocacy thing, but an awareness thing. I've had a bunch of people um, contact me and ask me what the deal is when it comes to vaping in cars, because one of the wonderful tabloid newspapers that we have decided to release an article. I think it was a tabloid newspaper and it was, it went all over Facebook and all that sort of stuff about vaping being illegal in cars. And right. uh, that's, uh, that's a load of old shite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> essentially a few yeah. years ago uh, when they made smoking illegal in cars with uh, when you've got kids i think it was like under 17 uh, mm -hmm. or under 18 if you've got kids in the car you're not allowed to smoke in the car but you were allowed to vape now when it comes to the vaping thing what you're not allowed to do is you're not allowed to be driving along big old cloud and then not be able to see where the fuck you're going which yes. you know it's that's not vaping related that's just don't be a fucking idiot. And yeah. same as it's the same, it comes under the same law as driving down your the, sort of the highway and going, I'm just going to drive like this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't drive with a blindfold on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so as far as I can tell from, from the looking into it that I've done so far, it's nothing vape specific. It just means you can still, you're still allowed to vape in cars, but yes. just don't blow clouds right out in front of you, which is yeah. common sense. The easiest thing I do, I don't know if you do this, but the easiest thing I do is is I open the passenger side window a little bit yeah. and then just blow that way, and that sucks yeah. it all out. Otherwise, it just comes yep. back in if you do it out of your drive. Crack it out a little bit. Uh, you know, in fact, there was one time where Dwayne and I were on a, a road trip. We were driving to Arizona, and all the windows up, and we're just vaping and listening to music and talking and vaping, and it came to a point where I was like, oh, okay, God, we got to crack a window in here. Like, it was, it was just milky. It was just yeah. a atmosphere in the car and as soon it just cleared out suddenly and i thought okay let's roll down the, <laughs> let's roll down that window you know because it, it can happen it can yeah. happen quick without even paying attention and hot box in banana juice doesn't really do a great deal to the other things <laughs> that <they> can't. <laughs> yeah exactly not at all <laughs> <laughs> so I've been doing a little bit of research for a change. I don't often do research before anyone okay. comes in, but I was kind of looking back on things and going, how long has it been since I've been watching you? And I realized that it was it was just around about the time where you were in the corner. It was it was after Brittany. It was after the next the next sure. phase. And when you're in the corner, when you're in Stuart over the top of your shoulder. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That seems like forever ago. <laughs> and I remember when you when you first kind of moved location, loads of people just lost their minds. They lost their shit. <laughs> yeah, which which, which time? I've closed. I've changed locations a bunch of time. In fact, if you want a vaping biker live stream exclusive information right now, there it. is a very really very good chance I'm going to be moving again uh towards the end of april so i'm gonna have a completely new office <laughs> yet again <laughs> yet again just after you've got that one looking good just after i got all settled in yet again <laughs> that's life <laughs> it's okay um now then, I do have a couple of sort of questions for you really but um cool. first of you're coming to the uk for jam yeah yes sir i'll be there are you hanging about either side of that or are you coming just just for the event and then uh, and then that's uh, the end of that one? I'll be there uh I'll be in the UK early. Uh, I'm flying in, I'll be landing Tuesday. Okay. I believe. And the event's not till Friday, right? Friday, that's Saturday. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be landing in the UK on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Um so I'll be there for well, most of Tuesday. 
you know, if I can get my sleep schedule fixed, yeah. but I'll be there two days, Wednesday and Thursday before the event to kind of, I don't know. I want to do london -y things, you know, I've, I've been to the UK London three times now and I haven't done any touristy london -y things. Yeah. And I'd like to do a little bit of that. Right. Absolutely. Well, Is that I, a thing I should do? Yeah. And you've, you've got a, you've got a vlog from Madame Two Swords and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to. <laughs> It's got to be done. <laughs> um, is there um, is there any kind of experiences? Because you've been now, uh, this will be your third year, I think. Yes. Yeah. Is there anything third that you've, year. the first two years, you saw a difference in UK vaping in that time? Or is it sort of pretty much the same every time compared to the, the states I'm talking about? Oh, uh, it, you know, it, it. I feel like in the UK, uh, it grows more every mm -hmm. time. And in the United States, everything, all the, all the uh, vape event shows have shrunk a little bit. They're, they're a little bit smaller than they used to be. And I feel like the UK shows keep getting a little bit bigger, a little yeah. bit bigger, a yeah. little bit bigger. Absolutely. And uh, I'm sure that's just due to, you know, the acceptance of vaping uh, between the two regions. But that's what I notice about UK. It gets bigger every year. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think the um, the one we have uh, uh, in Birmingham at uh, Expo Vapor Expo, I think that's the yes. biggest one in Europe now. I think that is just phenomenally huge now. And that's the, is that the one that's outdoors? Is that the one that's no. outside? No, oh, that, okay. That's um, that's Vape Fest. That's over in Shrewsbury towards the end of the year. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, and a lot of people keep telling me about Birmingham and that I really need to go to that show. Yeah. But just the dates never work for me. The dates of that show never work for me. And that bums me out because I've heard it's a really great show and I'd love to go to it. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. It's um it's it's just so big. I mean, they they did was I think it was last year, the start of last year, they realized that vaping had had a really hard time with the TPD and all that sort of stuff. And so they decided that what they were going to do is just bring a little bit of fun back to vaping and just put kind of fairground rides inside the the hall. So oh, that's so cool. <laughs> you go on Wurlitzes and fucking dodge cards, dodgems and all that sort of stuff. Oh, it's awesome. Well, They're a great crazy. bunch of guys that do that one. So I think that's really, really cool. Um, just having a quick look in chat there. There's a couple of people saying that Madam Two Swords is not good. No, you got to do that. And Tower Bridge, obviously you got to go to Tower Bridge. I think that's where they used to just wreck people. So you have yeah. to check that one. Um, <laughs> uh, Pie and Mash. Tower have you Bridge. had Pie and Mash when you came over here? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Pie yeah. And gravy. It's a, it's a thing. Yeah. Know? With gravy. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, it's like a meat pie, right? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. yeah of it's course. Got fish and chips and scrambled eggs and stuff. You've got to have, yeah. you've got to have that. Um, <laughs> if anybody in the chat does have questions, by the way, then start them at vaping biker or at grim green, um, sure. with, uh, put your capitals in uppercase, put your capitals, put your questions in uppercase if you can, because it just means that I'll be able to read them with my silly old caffeine ridden eyes. <laughs> jittery <laughs> eyes all over the place. <laughs> so when it comes to, um, when it comes to your, you're vaping. Obviously, you've been doing it a long time. You're coming up to March 4th, is it? Which is your nine-year anniversary? Uh, G uh, January 27th. This year was my nine-year anniversary. So I'm like, I'm like nine years and two months now. Uh, okay. I was just having a Crazy. look back at when your first vape video went up. And I, th I thought, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got it right there. Fuck. Yeah. No, that's right. My first, my first vape video did go up March, March 2009. There you but go. I, got, I got my first little kit. In January, January twenty seventh, two thousand nine. Yeah, uh, I bought it on eBay. I mean, it was way too expensive for what I got. It was way too expensive. It was like two hundred fifty dollars for two little stick batteries, yeah. you know, and two and and two little atomizers. And I didn't know what I was doing, but <laughs> I don't know. We made it work somehow. <laughs> yeah, nine years. Absolutely. Nine years. I, I, I was. Um, where is it? I think I've got it in here. I was showing people the my. Uh, group recently when i found it i found my very first vape kit and do you remember the uh the the it, there was yeah. the ego t and the ego something else and i think this is the other one um where you'd fill the uh ego c i think where you'd fill yeah, the, the ego c juice yeah that was a piece of shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah they were not great i don't know how <laughs> yeah i don't know how we made it work back then thinking back to the tech that we had in 2009 
yeah. 2010 even dismal yeah. dismal technology there's not a better time than 2018 to be a vapor because now we got all the cool toys but now it's kind of tough because if you're starting out there's so much stuff out there you just don't know what to go so with much. it's too much <laughs> I was it's looking back much. at some of Scott's old videos, I get you 69 and seeing um oh, what was what was his box called that was like the first squonker a million years ago. The old Oh box good lord. Box, I, think I don't even box. remember. I don't even remember. <laughs> I don't even remember. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it. you know, that's one of the things it's like uh, we were just talking about this on the other stream, but the vaping it's not like uh, vaping is vaping. It's not like a one size all fits, you know, one size yeah. fits all type of thing. You can't send, you can't recommend something like, oh yeah, do this 150 watts with some aliens for a new person. Exactly. That's unbelievable. So there needs to be, I want there to be like starter kits that are actually starter kits for smokers. Yeah, because Dimitri made a great point and he said vapors tastes always change. You know, sometimes we want a big sub ohm tank or a dripper or squonkers and our tastes are always changing. But the smokers taste is a cigarette. And so their tastes never change. So I think starter kits like catering to smokers, yes. I think is a really good, really good idea. Absolutely. That was one of the questions that I asked um, Brandon um from evolve because the, yeah. with the with the replay technology for for beginners to have a starter kit where you can't burn a coil where you get that flavor and you go yep that's what i want and then you just hit the replay button and you don't have to worry about temp control no yeah. temperatures no tcrs no bullshit yeah um, and it just keeps people being safe and enjoying their vape i think that sort of stuff's going to be amazing yeah I, yeah i absolutely agree absolutely we we need to make things there, there's a hobby side of vaping that i enjoy where you know you you build your coils and you install them and you clip and you press and you wick and you have this whole ritual of dripping and stuff like this yeah and then there needs to be this other side of vaping where someone a smoker could just grab something and just vape it and not yeah. smoke a cigarette and, and you know it doesn't take a lot of effort or a lot of thought there needs to be casual vaping instead Absolutely. of, uh, you know. And that brings me on to a point as well that, that that I've mentioned before. Before I go into that one, though, thank you very much to Cloud Chaser a blog for five pound donation in the super chat. There, the best two reviewers kept me smoke free for eighteen months now, so that's awesome. Oh, Keep right on. on. Yeah, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Now then, um, cool. when it comes to the star stuff, mouth to lung, I think has changed. I think from mouth to lung kind of years ago, it used to be tight like a cigarette. Now, mouth to lung seems to be that kind of super loose mouth to lung kind of vibe. Where mm -hmm. do you where do you fall? Because I, I'm very much long in the camp of kind of tighter is better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but where do you go? Because I know you I like, a lot of uh, pod systems. I like, uh, I like a little bit more open of a mouth to lung. Um, the, I think the K-Fun Light Plus is the the gold standard for me for a mouth to lung airflow it's a not uh, oh and it did have an adjustable airflow k fun light plus open yeah i think is the gold standard for me for mouth to lung it's a little bit open you still feel some resistance but it's not excessively open and it's not excessively tight sometimes too tight is is a negative to me i'd rather have something be more open than too tight yeah, you I know, think it's, but it's, it's personal preference thing. It's always going to be very, very relevant to um, to how big the chamber is and all that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. um, of course. But that I, th I think that's why it's brilliant that we have things like the Berserker tank. And now I think you're going to like this little 18 mil Vandy Vape Berserker RDA. I'm not a huge Vandy Vape fan, but this little yeah. flavor chasing atomizer is is pretty sweet. To be fair, uh, does it is it mouth to lung atomizer? Yes. Oh. oh interesting yes. okay it comes with the uh it comes with the little beauty rings as well so you get a couple of different beauty rings with it oh yeah um, you've got all of those holes along the side there to choose your airflow so you can kind of restricted lung hit it if you want to yeah but, uh you can go down i think it's like a 0 0.8 mil maybe oh crazy which is which is proper type which is fantastic but that's why i like the berserker rta yeah well yeah so, I think you're gonna. I think you'll think you'll enjoy this little. It's quite tall, but it's uh, it's a good one. Um, yeah. 
I think we've got a few questions in chat, so I'm just going to have to go through and have a quick look at these ones. Um, uh, oh, I'm going to shout out Four Beach. Oh, Four Beach. He's one of my patrons. Yo, yo, Four Beach. Bump it. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Grim Green, did you hear? Uh, did you guys hear about the Duvo Mods Apex Mech? It's the first threadless, no breaks in contact mech tube. I know nothing about that one. I, I I know nothing about that. What is it? It's threadless and no breaks in contact. <laughs> yeah, apparently, I don't know what that. How I don't they... know what that exactly. <laughs> I don't know what that means exactly. I'm trying to do some Google Foo on their website. <laughs> if you find it, then let me know. <laughs> I absolutely will. I have not heard of that. <laughs> Chris Bridges asks, um, squonking or dripping? Now, you know, whilst you squonked back in the day, it's you've you've kind of recently come back to squonking again, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I like squonking. I, I like squonking because it's like dripping without dripping. I think we all, I mean, we all know that. It's like yeah. you can use an atomizer uh, and get that sort of dripping experience, but without having to carry around a bottle of juice and drip. Yeah. So the reason that I still like dripping more than I like squonking is because I like the ritual of dripping. The ritual of dripping reminds me of like back in the day when you have the ritual of smoking where yeah. you, you know, you pack your pack and you flip it and you light it and you do the whole flick your ashes. And it's like a ritual. And I like that with dripping. I like having a mech and a glass dripper. And it's like, it's a ritual. You, you go and you drip and you tighten your juice and you vape it. It's kind of like a ritual. And that's why I really like dripping more than I like squonking, I think. Really? So you're, you're yeah. not fully converted, but you do dig it from time to time. I do, you know, and I like squonkers. I've got three squonkers set up right now and they're all great vapes. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. And if I'm going to leave the house, like if I'm going to run to Target or a grocery store, then I'll take a squonker with me because I can drive and just vape and I don't have to worry about it. But I, at home, I really like the ritual of dripping. Yeah. I just really like it. It's very yeah. satisfying to me. Yeah. Dripping's like rolling a cigarette. That's, that's a perfect way to put it. <laughs> perfect way to put it. <laughs> I like it. Now, one of the questions that a couple of people have asked um, through the chat here, and I, I, I've got my kind of uh, approach to how I deal with this question, but um, you must get asked this all the time. And it kind of relates to what you were saying earlier on with with different people's styles and all that sort of stuff. But sure. you must get asked what your favorite mech or dripper or whatever is all the time. All, all the time. All the time, constantly. Um, it, it's too, that's a really difficult question to answer. Um, my favorite Mac that I'm using is the one that uh, is in, in my hand right now. Yeah. That's, it's just whatever I have, that's my favorite one that I'm using. And I have other mechs and other atomizers and other, you know, stuff that I, I, I set up from time to time just because it's something that I really like using. So I'll keep around a certain box mod or a certain squonk or like my hex ohms and yeah. I'll just get them out every once in a while, set them up and be like, yeah, these are, awesome i love these <laughs> you know and they're great and then you know you you kind of sometimes have to put them away because of other things coming into your office that you need to review or evaluate or try out and, and stuff like that so absolutely it's real. it's a really that's too hard of a question to answer <laughs> exactly i don't have any favorites my no, favorite is whatever keeps me from smoking Definitely. And that's something that, that generally when it comes to, I guess, kind of when we're reviewing all of the time, it's one of those things that you, you, you do have so much stuff you've got to get through and so much yeah. stuff you have to trial and, you know, and, uh, and test the crap out of that. You don't always get the time to go back and go, Oh Christ, I'll pick up that Kennedy that I used two years ago or you yeah, know, yeah. whatever else. Yep. That's exactly what it's like this little guy. I'm using this because I like it as much as I can, because I know it's life is limited in my hands. Yeah. I know I've got like three more weeks out of this before I'm going to have to put this atomizer on another mod or another, you know, so I, I yeah. get the most that I can out of it while I have it with me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just a quick shout out. I think big Lou is in the house. Hello, big Lou and uh, Kimmy vapes. Hello to you as well. I don't know if you've oh. seen young Kimmy. She's, she does a marvelous little job on her YouTube. Oh yeah. Yeah. Kimmy vapes. I'm have, I, I believe I have met Kimmy vapes in real life, maybe at one point. 
I don't remember. I have a really bad memory, Kimmy Vape, so I apologize, but I believe we might have met in real life. <laughs> I can never remember. And and it's one of those things as well. Not only is it bad after a show when someone comes up and went, Oh yeah, yeah, right. My name's Steve. I saw you at I saw you at Jam last weekend. And you go, Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it's really hard because you can't remember everybody. Yeah. I'm I'm really bad with names. I'm much better with faces. Yeah. But I'm really bad, really bad with names, really bad at remembering people. Even at ECC, I I, I met so many people. I couldn't tell you 10 of their names. Yeah. It's just, you know, it gets real overwhelming with stuff like that. Absolutely. And then someone will see you kind of, you know, at a show and they'll say, oh, yeah, I sent you an email last year. <laughs> yeah. And you go, cool, yeah. yeah. It makes you feel rubbish, yeah. doesn't it? Because you feel yeah. like an absolute asshole. But uh, I do every time. remember everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I wish I could. I just can't. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Uh, Kenneth Gillespie, who is the uh, from Saucer Mods, who makes this uh, this claim, more is asking if we're going to Scotland. I'm not going to Scotland. Um, I take it you're not going to be here long enough to to go up to Scotland anyway. No, unfortunately, I can't. I, I'd love to go to Scotland. My my heritage is Scottish heritage. I'm a member of uh, Clan Buchanan in okay. Scotland, uh, and I've never been. Well, that needs to be a thing. That's it. It does. It does. It Grab does need to be a thing. and get yourself over. <laughs> yes i <laughs> just come over oh yeah tf cooks i re i know i remember you tf cooks yes <laughs> you uh, tf cooks was ruby Roo's very first subscriber that's why i remember tf cooks that is some memory that's yeah. fantastic it's just one of those random things that you know sticks with you, I guess. <laughs> um, Dino Knight, who is quite possibly one of the nicest people on the planet, um, asks, "How are you getting on with the Rage Squonker from uh, from Own Boy OC?" Oh, it's it's pretty great. It's pretty yeah. great, you guys. I'm trying not to talk it up too much, um, but it's it's pretty fantastic. It's a it's pretty fantastic. That's what I'll say about it. Don't pay attention to what's on top. But I've been using the squonker like crazy and having a dual 18650 regulated squonker that's not gigantic. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Absolutely. It works real well. Excellent. Should be excited. And they're going to be affordable too. Yeah. They're going to be like $100, was it? Somewhere like that? Yeah. MSRP is 100 bucks. So fantastic. Yeah. Not bad. Hopefully he gets them over here. I don't know if um, Andy from Own Steve will be getting them over, but I imagine someone will. Yeah, probably Andy. Probably Excellent. Andy. Excellent. Um, right. Uh, try to get that beer on vapor. What? Oh, there's a, a guy called Teus who's a lovely, lovely man. He builds coils. Um, over, oh, I can't remember where you're from, Teus. Norway? Is it Norway? Could be wrong. This is where the crap memory comes in. Yeah. Um, so I'm to try to get some beer in Expo. That was something that I wanted to bring up with you because you are the, possibly the reason that so many um, vapors or vaping channels talk about beer in their, uh, <laughs> yeah. in their reviews. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just one of those things. I started talking about beer years ago, years ago. 2013, I think, is when I first started talking about beer on YouTube. Yeah. Just because I, it's one of those things. It's like, I, I don't get me wrong. Like, I love vaping, but there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about, you know? Yeah. And so beer was the first thing that I, like, incorporated into my vlog. And it's great. Beer, like vaping, kind of brings people together. You know what I mean? Yes. It's just yeah. one of those things. When 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 you find you start talking about beer, have you tried this? Have you tried that? And you drink beer together. It's very much like a, you know, like a it's like a fellowshipping type of thing. It's yeah. quality time, and you're drinking beer together. And I and I just love beer, and I love the beer culture. So, more the merrier. We should Absolutely. all be drinking some beers. It was one of those things that just surprised me when I was looking through your sort of back catalog from years ago. I was kind of clicking yeah. on a clicking on something from like two or three years ago and going, okay, he was doing beer back then. And then I was keep kept going back and there was still beer going on. And was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> beer. Yeah. Now, what happened to Stuart? Now Stuart's behind you still. I think. Yes. Uh, he, he, the helmet's up there. Uh, he, he, when I was in that little closet corner, um, that, that's when I first moved down to Southern California and, 
I could really only afford a really very tiny, small place because I, I had just quit my job. I started doing YouTube full time at that point. That was the first time I, I did YouTube full time and I was just stuck in my little corner and I wanted to decorate it. Yeah. And so I put up some stuff and I had to have Stuart and uh, hung the, uh, you know, like the suit or the T-shirt underneath yeah. him. So he was like a character. It was pretty great. <laughs> Who but came Stuart, first? Stuart Who did you survives. apologize for belching to first? Was it Stuart or Shake? <laughs> Stuart, for sure. <laughs> Definitely Stuart. <laughs> Definitely Stuart. Sorry, Stuart. <laughs> uh, actually, I think it was Sheik. Sheik used to comment constantly on my videos that he doesn't like it when I burp. And I met Sheik. Uh, what year was that? 2015, I think, in Niagara Falls, I met Sheik. Yeah. And it was... It was just a great experience. He just came up and he's like, I'm chic. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like, oh my God, I'm sorry. It was great. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. <laughs> um, uh, Big Lou's donated uh, a couple of bucks on the uh, on the Super Chat. Thank you very much, Lou, for that one, buddy. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Guybrush Threepwood is, is saying, which battery will win the race, 2700 or 21700, or will we stay with 18650s? How do you feel about that? Uh, here's the thing. Here, here's what I think needs to happen in vaping. I'm going to paint with a very broad brush. Uh, we need to, to keep these batteries specialized for what they're for. So like 21, 700 batteries are probably going to be great in regulated mods. I don't think there's going to be a, an 18650 that can outperform a 21700 in a regulated mod, yeah. but 21700s aren't necessarily amazing for like a tube mech or like a, a smaller little single 18650 squonker guy yeah and i think we have really reliable 18650s right now like samsung 25rs or vtc 5as mm -hmm. that are are good and reliable and we know the chemistry and we know how they work and they're just really good reliable batteries and that's what i use in my mechs is Samsung 25Rs because they're so reliable, tried and true. I feel much better putting a Samsung 25R in a mech than I do a 21700 from yeah. Quail Art. But yeah. I think we can use those 21700s in other applications. I don't think much like vaping isn't a one size fits all thing. I don't think batteries are a one size fits all thing. I think 18650s will always be around for certain applications. Yeah. And also, it sense. does mean that you can continue to have nice small mods that are right. sort of, uh, not massive in size and they're not just honking great big massive things that you've got to carry around yeah. in your pocket all the time. Yeah. Well, and that's why Dwayne decided to do two 18650s in a squonker because anything bigger, and this would have become, you know, that geek vape squonker that's like the width of a <laughs> baseball bat, just a huge <laughs> thing, you know? So I think in the right applications, certain batteries are going to work better than other certain batteries. I don't yeah. think it's fair to compare an 18650 with a 21700 because they're very, you know, they're very different cells and they're going to work better in certain applications. Yeah, absolutely. I'm super excited well, about the Samsung 30T when that comes out because I think that is going to be a badass battery. I think that is going to be really, really cool. But I've been hearing a lot about that battery. Yeah, I did. I, a thing it's with, not um, for sale anywhere. Not yet, I don't think. I did a yeah, uh, I did a, a a live stream kind of thing with um with Mooch. I think it was oh, just cool. before Christmas, and and he showed us some some graphs with the thirty T and how it just basically pisses over every other battery out there. For oh everyone. wow, cool. Is it a <laughs> is it a eighteen six fifty? No, it's a twenty one seven hundred. Whoa. So I that I think will be the uh, the one that allows us to have a really good mech 21700 cell yeah I think. well shit i'm excited about that <laughs> it's gonna be awesome um just a quick one to barris i think that's how you know it's pretty say your name barris babakan dean i watched your vids extensively before i quit smoking you helped me tremendously smoke free for five months thank you so much thank you very much barris i'm gonna do that just because Nick yeah doesn't. yeah, yeah. Bump it. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Um, now, don't forget, if you've got any questions, do start them with at Vaping Biker or at Green Green, and we can hopefully yeah. see them a little bit easier, particularly if you put them in uppercase. That'll make life a little bit easier. 
So when it comes to your RDA, obviously you've had the the recoil came out um, 2016, middle of 2016, the original yep. recipe. Yep, yep. Um, 2016. Now we're getting. Um, we've obviously we've got access to the squonk pins. Where are the squonk pins all over the place? Are they in the UK yet? Do you know? Uh, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure if they're in the UK right now, if I'm being real honest. Um, we did our first run of original recipe recoils with squonk pins in blue and black. And, uh, I believe that we sold completely out of them. We're getting yeah. more in. I don't know if they're in the UK yet. They, they should go to the UK because the original recipe recoil, I mean, I, I know that it's my own product. It's my favorite atomizer. I use it as a dripper, I use it as a squonker. It works amazing as a squonker. The flavor is ridiculous. And the way that the deck and everything is set up in the original, it squirts the juice. Perf it hits your coils. It's a beautiful thing. It's a yeah. beautiful thing. The original <laughs> recipe recoil as a squonker is a beautiful thing. Excellent. Excellent. I got the, um, I got my original one out uh, a little while ago. It was a couple of months ago now. And I thought I am going to vape something that I've not vaped for a while. And I've got my sort of atomizer stand that was next to me and that was on it all cleaned up. And I thought I'll give it a go. Got the cloud cup on there and I've forgotten that it was what is, it was just a fabulous little vape and I really enjoyed it back then and I enjoy yeah. it now as well. Oh, cool. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad and you that, like it. I don't think a lot of people really got that kind of slightly smaller chamber, did they? They didn't quite understand that kind of right. getting a bit more flavor from it and yeah know, and all that sort you're, of stuff you're getting a lot more flavor from it I, I love 22 millimeter atomizers they're they're great for flavor but we didn't want to bring out a 22 millimeter atomizer so we did a real small deck and then just put a big 24 millimeter cap over it so that yeah. it would fit on box mods or tube max and and still have that uh, a little bit cleaner of a look i guess but yeah we did that small deck on purpose because flavor <laughs> oh because flavor <laughs> and it was a pretty bold move to go with uh, an open cap or a sort of a slightly more closed cap and that was it no kind of afc going yeah, that was it and it's because we designed it uh pardon me i have vape in my mouth do you ever talk with vape in your mouth i hate that <sighs> the wife um, says it makes me sound a little bit rapey <laughs> <laughs> uh, i really better not do it now so we we designed that recoil to for the way that we like to vape, just for the way that me and Dwayne like to vape. And we went through a thousand and a half caps before we got that the, the clouds bro clouds cap, that diameter of airflow spaced and angled down. And it was just it was just perfect. And we released we did it and we wanted to include a, a more restricted lung hit as well, because I really like restricted lung hits yeah when it's there's a little bit of restriction to it and so that's why we did the flavor cap even though they both will deliver flavor in spades yeah um but the airflow is simply just what i liked it yeah. was my favorite airflow no need to adjust it it's, it's perfect and that airflow perfect. thing i think a lot of people get surprised when when they see you kind of closing things and you'll close an rda down a third or a half or something like that because you can get yeah. that flavor as well as a decent condensed cloud as well yeah and, yeah um, that's one of the things i've kind of tried to to um i don't know be a little bit evangelical about with with regards to some rdas because it's not always about just having you know huge open air to get big clouds because you can get a you can get a lot of air going but it'll dilute the cloud so it kind yep. of shit anyway yep 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 so yep, it's yep, uh, yep. It's nice to be able to close that down, but then also you've got more options when it comes to building, particularly for things like mechs and stuff as well, because you can get a better cloud, more flavor and everything else without having to go down stupid low on them, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there was a time, there was a time in vaping where more airflow was better. Like everyone was just releasing these RDAs with obscene airflow, like the yeah. old mutation Xs yeah. where it was just like breathing. <laughs> you know, there was no resistance at all. And, you know, in order to use that, you had to put these really hot builds in there and really pull on it really hard. And it was just, I don't know, it was not an enjoyable vaping experience. Yeah. So as much as I love smooth, like big, smooth, swooshy airflow, it, there has to be, <laughs> there has to be some restriction there for me to, to enjoy it. I can't have that much air. I know a I few weeks can't. ago, Kent was was uh, when when you did your vlog with Kent, he he kind of got you to to vape at more power with more open air and to suck harder. 
Yes, um, yes. Have you reverted back to your uh, your normal style, or have you kind of stuck um, with that a little bit? I've stuck. I've stuck with it. I only you. I only do that on the Twisted Messes twenty four because I feel like Kent educated me, and now I use his RDA for that. But I rock it full open with a real hot build, well over a hundred watts, which yes. I've have never done in the past. And every time I vape it, it's like vaping Kent's setup. Yeah. And every time I vape Kent's setup, I love it. And so I recreated that at home and I keep it around just to have that Kent type of experience. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, I mean, you know, he said in that vlog, he did, he did the twisted message 24 for the, to suit the way that he wanted to vape. Mm. And so I have it set up how he would, so I get the Kent experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for the most part, no. All of my normal stuff is much cool, much much cooler. I mean, not as hot. Yeah. Less wattage. A little bit tighter airflow. Yeah. But you know that just goes to show that you know there's so many different ways to vape. Absolutely. And you can make it enjoyable for how you like to vape. You don't have to vape the same as everybody else. No, exactly, exactly. That's Adjusting great. to taste is the future. Yes. Now, um, there have been a couple of questions. Mike Renucci and Bjorn Hansen have asked um, about the if 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 you've tried the Haku or the uh, the One RDA. Um, have you tried either of those ones as yet? Uh, I have not tried either of those. No. Now, no. when it comes to because the, the, what that kind of the the process my brain went when that when I saw those was when it comes to the sort of the the higher end things. Um, and the sort of the, the the less kind of mass produced stuff. Back in the day, when I was when I was looking at your back catalog, like kind of pretty not right at the start, but kind of once you were got had got into your groove, you 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 did review some of the sort of higher end kind of bits and pieces, and even things like the K fun back then were were yeah. kind of a bit on the bit on the posh side. Was yeah. it? Was it a uh, kind of a, a, a legitimate decision in your own head to say, I'm not going to do the high end stuff or too much of the high end stuff. I'm going to sort of keep with the stuff that people can get hold of easily. Or was that something uh, that was just a natural evolution? Yeah, it wasn't uh, it wasn't like a, a decision where I decided to, to not review or to review certain things really ultimately, even now it doesn't matter to me if something's high end or, you know, really low end or whatever mass produced shit. Yeah. Um, I just, I know how I like to vape and I, and I subjugate, is that a word? <laughs> I subject my vapes to, to get me to that place that I want to vape, if that makes sense. So yes. I'll try to vape the way I want to vape out of a vapor SO sub ohm tank or something like that. And if it delivers, then I go, cool, let's, we're going to review this. Cause this gives me the vape that I want. And that product doesn't, it doesn't matter if that's high end or low end. Yeah. That makes sense. So I'm not against high end stuff. I, I try to review some high end stuff, but honestly, the reason that I don't love reviewing real expensive high end stuff is because of the comments. Yeah. I, I just can't deal with why do you think that's good? It's so expensive. And I go, well, <laughs> yeah, it's also really good. And yeah. I know that it's expensive, but it's also really good. So I think the uh, the the difference between the vape experience that you get from something that's kind of from Vandy Vape or something that you've spent yeah 150 200 dollars on when it comes to an atomizer is there's there's a very small gap between you know the experience that you actually get but yeah. the difference with the with the higher end stuff is you know it is uh, is that vape hype situation yeah. but also things like aftercare and all that sort of stuff I think you've got a lot more goodness to come in as a result of that when you're spending more money yeah yeah well and that's exactly that's one of the reasons why i really like the the mech rda combo is because yeah. it feels i don't know it feels a little craftier yeah than filling up a big brightly colored sub ohm tank and just vaping your face off it yeah. feels a little bit craftier as far as like you can fine tune your vape a little bit you got to take care of it you have to clean it and the contacts and you know i like that craftiness uh side of it i guess i don't know i don't think about price tags if no, i don't have no. to absolutely know? Absolutely. But I, I think it's one of those things I don't think people necessarily recognize when they kind of just spew hating comments about you just reviewed something that's $150. I can buy right. seven of right. those. 
What a rip off. People, that's the big one. What a rip off. They're just trying to rip you off. <laughs> well, you know, you do what you do. <laughs> and I think it's nice to have on the channel, I have a sort of a, I'd, I'd like to think of it as a kind of an aspirational piece. You know, I'd, I'd watch some of Todd's reviews or some of Damien's and, and um, there'd be stuff in there that I could never afford. It just yeah. wouldn't be oh, a yeah. thing, but it would be nice to see something really cool that someone's made. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's plenty of stuff. I've watched plenty of reviews of stuff of stuff that I can't afford. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like watching Top Gear or something like that, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, it is. Know, someone's driving around in big old Lamborghinis. We're not going to get one of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I drive a Toyota. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Dean and Grim, thoughts on the Nudge Twenty Two? I've reviewed it. Have you reviewed yours? Uh, I haven't reviewed it, but I've used it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, I like it. I like the I like the original Nudge the most. I think I like it better than the twenty two. Okay, that's interesting. That's I I the other way around. I like the twenty two oh, more really? than twenty four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like the twenty four. Uh, but I'm a dripper, so I like the twenty four for dripping. I and I don't. I mean, I could see the twenty two being a banger on a squonker. Yes. It's probably a monster on a squonker, but I, I drip. So I like a little bit. I like the 24. I like it a little bit bigger. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That makes sense. That well, makes that's sense. just me. <laughs> so that's that. Uh, that was a question from Brian Jackson there. So hopefully we've got that one sorted out. Um, uh, Dave K, Biker and Grim, how do you feel about rewrap battery manufacturers, exaggerated ratings, and how can the industry and us vapors eliminate such negligent behavior? That's a question and a half. Yeah, that is a, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> um i don't think i don't think we can at the end of the day the the batteries and the cells that we use aren't meant for our purposes nobody really makes a vape battery yeah um and uh we've seen people like lg and has, i think sony have as well put printing actually on the label and on the the mm. cell underneath the label that mm. it's not to be used outside of the battery packs and all that sort of malarkey mm. so when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the people that that exaggerate the ratings, I think that's when we all just have to. Everyone should be subscribed to Mooch for number one. Yes, yeah. absolutely. How is that not? How is that not kind of the biggest subscribe to vape channel on the planet? I don't. It, it bothers me that does. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he you know he's just starting out, and I try to send as many people as I can to Battery Mooch. Just subscribe to Battery Mooch, because absolutely. ultimately knowledge is king i mean that's people need to be educated on stuff about batteries and of course things like rewraps and exaggerated claims and it's all it can all be pretty dangerous batteries yeah. are are a dangerous little tube of energy <laughs> yeah and it and we've yeah. seen obviously with, with phones with samsung phones and stuff that it's not it's not vaping specific it's just the fact that yeah you've got a battery and and it, it kind of when people put batteries in their pockets it it blows your mind because you think well if you if you're in if you're working on your car you don't put a spanner and rest it between the positive and negative terminals on your battery in your car <laughs> right that right. would not be clever so <laughs> you don't need a big fucking warning to tell you not to do that so yeah yeah white people exactly. are just idiots is is beyond beyond me i don't really understand it um vape and bike have you gotten the twist twist twisted message 24 pro series yet yes i have i have been using it i've got the black one sitting on top of my squid industries double barrel 2.1 i think yeah. it's 2.1 or 2.5 2.1 2.5 i don't know 2.1 that's one um and uh, yes i've been using the uh, the other ones as well i've got i was very lucky and got all the different colors so i've been using all sorts and they're marvelous yeah they're marvelous. <clears throat> i was talking to kent about it earlier on actually funnily enough oh cool cool yeah um, do you think there will be any more technological advancement in vaping? Asks Daniel Carsewell. Um, Yeah, of course. There, I think there's always going to be technological advancements in vaping. I just think we, vaping went through such a big growth spurt, like yeah. in the last few years where the technology just really went crazy. And now it almost seems like we're trying to come up with things to be different just so that it appears that we're doing something different. You know yes. what I mean? There's only so many ways you can put a coil into two posts. Like there's only so many ways you can do that, but we keep trying to think of things like, oh, we'll put it this way, put it, put it this way. We'll do yeah. this, we'll put it up here. 
you're doing the same fucking thing that we've been doing for the last eight years. Because yeah. your coil is going like this. It's not different than if your coil is going. That's not, that's not innovation. That's just different. Yeah. Where I think innovation needs to happen is in the boards that we use on the mods. You know, the DNA 250C, that's that's innovation. That's that's technology driving yeah. it forward, you know. Yeah. I haven't got to use one. Dean has one. He gets <laughs> to use one. But like that sort of technology, I think, is is really good. I think we can always make our boards better, safer, faster. Definitely. Definitely. I, th I think we're going to get more more development for, for smoking. Yeah. I think that's where the technology is going to be poking sort of hard at the moment to get people into vaping. Yeah. Because, I mean, regardless of whether you're using something like this or a mech or the, the replay or whatever else, you're still just putting energy into that coil, aren't you? Yeah. Yep. That's exactly it. As long as you keep it nice and easy, then uh, then everyone's a winner. But it's getting that, those kind of smokers into it without having to stress about it. That's uh, that's the the key thing. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I would. I want to see more starter kits. Definitely. Definitely. Starter kits. And I think we're gonna we're, we're gonna definitely see more. I think this year. I think it's going to be a, a big thing towards the tail end of this year. We'll see. It. We'll see more development in them. I think. Yeah. Um, because we have to. We have to be able to uh, get people into into vaping easily. Yes. It needs to be effortless. It was, it was, I, when I first started smoking or first started vaping, it was a lot of effort. It was just like nonstop fiddling and things breaking and testing and yeah. modifying stuff. It was real, real fiddly. And so somehow a bunch of us made it work, but around that time there were a lot of people trying it and just instantly going back to cigarettes just right away. This is too difficult. Yeah. And now that it's become real easy, I think we're going to get more and more converters, conversions. Absolutely. Of smokers. Absolutely. As long as we can get the yeah. shops to stop recommending sub ohm kits to, to yeah. <laughs> Don't would be there's good. no yeah, there's no reason for a new vapor to have a G Priv and a baby beast tank. No. That's... I don't think there's any reason for anyone to have a baby beast tank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, those <laughs> coils are so bad. Chris Vega um, asks, have either of you tried the Thug Life RDA? It has the original Velocity RDA airflow, but 24 mil and clamps. I haven't. I don't know anything about it because um, uh, my finger is not on the pulse at the moment. How about you? They're a, uh, they're a California company. In fact, they just emailed me a few days ago uh, with a bunch of pictures of the Atomizer. Uh, I'm going to try it out. I don't love the Thug Life branding, but if it's a good RDA, it'll be a good RDA regardless. But yeah. it does look pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Nick Watts asks, do you, do, do yins? I think that's do you <laughs> any pod systems that take other brands of pods or an adapter? Um, the only one that I can think of, Daniel DJLSB was looking at something at a, at a show, and I think it was that uh, was it ECC you were at recently. Yeah. Yeah. They had a uh, the Limitless had a mod called the Marquee uh, that I don't have around me, but it uses a little uh, adapter guy, a little silicone adapter guy, and you can it, it fits most of the pod systems. Like you can fit a jewel pod in it, you can fit a fixed pod in it, you can fit a bow pod in it, you can fit something other pod in it. It's compatible with like five different pods. It's it's a tiny and it's a tiny little box that you press the pods in and you can use a bunch of bunch of different pods with it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It kind of ruins the appeal of a pod system though. <laughs> I mean, there was, a, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't really get into many of them. I've tried yeah. them, and I can't, but now we're in the UK. We can't have those kind of super high nicotine affairs yeah. anyway. Yeah. Which yeah. is, uh, which is put pay to a lot of them, sadly. Which they're trying to push back on, from what I understand. They're trying to change the TPD to mm -hmm. uh, exclude higher nicotine stuff because they want more people switching. Yes. Yeah. I think I don't think we're gonna we're gonna be going down that way. To be honest with you. Yeah. I think we, th this is the weird thing about the UK. Let's say we we complain about the cold, and then we we complain when. It's <laughs> We complain when it's dry and we complain when it's wet. And um, and with regards to, to to vaping, we've got people going, you know, we're 95% safer, all college physicians will do all this, we'll give a load of studies to say how great vaping is. Um, yeah. And the government go, no, no, 
no, no, fuck you, no. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> No, no. We're, not, we're not having any of that. We need we need pharmaceutical companies in the country. We don't we don't yeah. want to piss them off. And obviously, there's uh, there's I think there's a, a lot. What a lot of people don't understand is when it comes to things like um, kind of people living long. There's a lot of money in death, sadly. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, if people weren't getting as much cancer, then there wouldn't be there wouldn't be all the money spent on life prolonging drugs. Um, but also, if people were living longer, then it's a bigger drain on the company's the country's resources and what have you anyway, which uh, which you would think people would be happy about. But no, no. <laughs> Just the government's a bunch of my brain. Oh, I think vaping, more than anything else, has kind of made, brought to the forefront of, of all of us that do it. Um, how much government put kind of money before life, which is which is terrifying. Yeah, I've never experienced any situation where where I've kind of that's been as obvious in the past. Yeah, yeah, it's really with vaping. Vaping has exposed a lot of uh, <laughs> government. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to say corruption. I don't need to put on my conspiracy hat, but no, I mean conspiracy away. Tinfoil hats I, all around. I'm all. It's fine. unbelievable to me that in the United States they're demonizing vaping so much. It's yeah. excessive over here, man. It is excessive how badly they demonize vaping over here and how even just a stark contrast it is compared to the UK. It's it's like night and day. Yeah. I mean, the UK is like a vapor's paradise compared to the United States right now. <laughs> well, this it's is unbelievable. The, the strange thing. It does seem that way. But then, you know, the, the a lot of the time you'll see the tabloid newspapers come out with really negative, like I was talking about with the smoking and, and vaping in the car and what have you. Um, they'll come out with something really negative and like vaping is the worst thing on the planet and you're all going to die. And right. <laughs> when you read the comments underneath these articles, they're just full of people going, oh, you're just swapping one thing for something else and you're going to die from that. And, rah, 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 rah. Yep. and it just shows that people don't have the uh, the education yet. The general public don't have the education. So we can advocate as much as we like within the industry. But yep. until we go out and, and kind of throw that out to the big wide world, then we're we're preaching at the choir, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's all public opinion. Public opinion goes a long way Absolutely. in stuff like that. And vapors will always be a, a minority. So, you know, yeah. the government aren't going to listen to them in a minority unless you really, really get lucky. Um, right then. Now I'm just having a little look and seeing if there is any questions. I think I may have missed someone being a knobhead earlier on, but uh, they don't appear to be being a knobhead now, so that's all right. Um, <laughs> uh, what have we got going on here? Uh, I don't know if I missed it, but would you ask, Grim, if the squonk recoil comes with a regular 510 pin as well? It says Corgoth. <laughs> Uh, yes, they do. If you buy, if you buy the Squonk original recipe recoil, it comes with a standard pin, but it comes with the Squonk pin, uh, installed, pre-installed, but it does come with a regular pin, Boom. I believe. Yes. <laughs> and I'll say yes. <laughs> or just go and get the, uh, the, the, the rebel. Yeah. Or just, yeah, just go get the rebel. <laughs> now, has there been any thought? I mean, you must do. You must have thought about kind of what you're going to be doing next. Um, yeah. Obviously, you're not going to say what your your know, next product would be. However, do you think it would be maybe in a in a fantasy world where you don't get where you don't get a kind of on the record? Would it be more like a tank or more like a mod? Would you say? Um, after the squonker. We're going to do, uh, I'm going to call it a topper. Okay. So it's going to be a topper. Um, I think that's kind of all I can say about it without <laughs> giving it away. <laughs> it's going to be a topper that's designed for squonkers. Ooh. I like huh. the idea of specialized vaping things yeah. because yeah. there's just some things that don't translate well from dripping to squonking like you can't just take a dripper rda and put a squonk pin in it and expect it to be a good squonking atomizer yeah so i like the idea of specialized things um and so the next thing that we're bringing out is going to be a specialized thing for squonking Yo. and it's going to be a topper you can kind of see it right here real quick if you look real quick <laughs> over here maybe it's not going to look anything like that, but that's going to be coming up after the Rage Squonk box that Dwayne designed. Nice. Okay. Yeah. We'll look forward to that. Have you, will We're it be excited about it? Yeah. What's that? This year? Uh, this year. Yeah. This year, definitely for sure. Fantastic. For sure. 
Now, how's cool. the uh, how is the the juice going? Obviously, you know, you've got the you had the the, the, the signature series was the last sort of releases yeah. that, that you did. Have you thought about doing anything along those lines? And the reason I ask you that is because when I was doing my research, I realized that back in the day, you would you were doing some mixing videos. I think, I don't know if it was your first one, but it was Flavor Art Maple oh, in yeah. the kitchen with a really dodgy camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way back in the day. Yeah, I used to do juice mixing and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it's it's hard with the FDA. Um, I'm We're trying to be as compliant as possible. We're trying to not... We're trying to actually not release any new liquid products because of the FDA, um, because we'd like to stay in business. Um, so we're really just selling the juices, the tried and true flavors that we've been selling since 2012. I mean, a lot of these flavors were designed in 2012. In fact, a lot of these flavors, like the the Namber Classic stuff, mm -hmm. is all designed for mouth to lung vaping. Yeah, it's all 50 50 PGVG available up to 18 milligram. It's all meant for mouth to lung vaping. Um, the last thing I did was the yeah, was the signature line. But that was even that was in 2016 as well. Yeah, that was the last thing we did was the signature line. Um, thankfully, we're back in the UK. We were gone for a very long time. But thankfully, mm -hmm. we're back in the UK with the cult and the signature. So that's kind of what we got for liquids right now. Absolutely. Now, do you think, obviously, with with kind of each state sort of closing down out there, over there in America and having different kind of interpretations of, of the law when it comes to vaping, um, I noticed that a few of the American companies are setting up shop as well as in America, kind of in Europe as well. And that's yeah. kind of on the cards for some some others. Is that something that you've ever thought about? Because obviously you've got the whole European market that isn't FDA related. Yes. I, I mean, I would love to... Uh... Uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's just difficult. I would love to release some new flavors. I've got tons of ideas for great new flavors that I think would be awesome. Yeah. And to be able to release those in the UK, I think would be a, would be a huge thing. Um, but on the same side of the same coin, the juice market is so saturated. Yes. There's so many, there's so many companies, there's so many flavors, you know, we have a finite amount of flavors. We're all kind of working with the same stuff. So when someone tells me that their cereal doesn't taste like other cereals, I kind of go, well, I mean, it kind of has to a little bit, right? We're all <laughs> using the same flavors. So it kind of does. So I, I don't want to, I don't just want to release more liquids onto the market in an already really, really saturated market. Yeah. There's a really lot out there, but there's market. not a lot that kind of, I don't think it's it's as comparative as it used to be. Like if you had, I don't know, 100 juices, three or four years ago, you'd probably get 40 or 50 of them that were really good. And mm -hmm. then, you know, the other half or so would be, would be a bit shit. Now we've yeah. got so many out there that now it's more like kind of, 15 20 percent are really good and the rest yeah. yeah there's a lot of just really i don't know there's just a lot of really bad juice out there yeah and, and the it thing excites is, when you find something that's good though huh yeah i love it i love finding something that's new and good i love it that's my favorite my favorite thing is to be surprised by a juice yes where i just just some random juice company some random flavor and you give it a try and you're like wow like, where did this come from? That came exactly. out of nowhere. That's so yeah. great. No, no hype behind it. No, nothing. Just a really good flavor. Yeah. This is something that um, that I've, has been blowing me away recently. This vapor junkie northern syrup. Okay. Like a maple syrup and pancakes. And that's why I kind of I got excited when I saw you doing a, a syrup flavor on your uh, oh, yeah. earlier stuff. That yeah. is one of those things I thought syrup pancake no nah, not for me i've never right. really enjoyed one but i got some of that and uh, and i'd had it in my sort of my my juice holders for, for ages and uh, and I, I rocked it out and i think i've gone through i don't know about uh, about a hundred and something mil of it within <laughs> a matter of no time you know yeah yeah <laughs> it's always that flavor that you never expect you go like you know like pancakes and maple syrup you go ah oh. All right. Yeah. And then when you try it, you go, oh, where have you been all my life? Exactly. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, with the, I, I know you occasionally talk about, was it the pounding on acid that you had many years ago and then you got super excited when you found it again? 
Oh yeah, yeah, the smacks, the pony yeah. on acid. It's my favorite. I I might even go on record as to say this is my favorite juice just ever. Like I will pick this juice above the majority of other juices. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. just so good. It's such a good flavor. <laughs> Was that? Did you over in the states? Did you have the um the the kind of the 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 fashion juices that were were were? It, literally everybody went through a stage of doing fashion juices yeah i mean there was kind of there was what was it um red i think i've got a concentrate here because i decided i was going to try some again um red astaire from tea juice did you ever have that i have not, I have not oh, had that. It, it's it was angry as fuck but like four years ago everybody <laughs> in the uk had red astaire everybody yeah. <laughs> um it's kind of like a, a mentholy um tunes do you have tunes like throat sweets and stuff cherry tunes um yes i don't yeah. know that terminology you're using weird british terminology right now that i don't <laughs> kind of, understand uh, like uh, like throat sweets when you've got a when you've got a sore throat there cherry oh yeah sure sure things that you suck on and it, yeah. it was like that and literally everybody decided to go through that and and uh, i just i think it's probably harder for something to take hold of a of a community over in america because it's so big but yeah. um, over here in the UK, oh, without a doubt, it was just a <laughs> <plenty of fun. laughs> Um, Andy Franklin asks, when is the rage going on sale? Um, it's it's going to be soon. We're coming down to the wire. I'm going to give it uh, at least another week, but maybe maybe two weeks. Okay. But no, no longer than two weeks. No gotcha. longer than two weeks. And we'll have them on the Recoil RDA site. They're available for wholesale if you email Dwayne. I'm I'm quite sure that Andy is getting some of them. So they should be in the UK. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. We'll see. Cool. I see will uh, I will chase him up on those. See how it goes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, Kenji Kido says, I switched uh, four weeks ago to, to vaping. Um, is it normal that every juice I taste tastes muted? Um, and he's asking us both that. I would say that I'm not entirely sure how you know it's muted if you've only been vaping for four weeks, but also <laughs> yeah. you've still got yeah. the, the tobacco in your system. Your taste yes. buds are still shit from smoking. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you're, you're still, your taste buds are still all messed up. And uh, honestly, it's hard because way back in the day, um, we had a really high PG juices yeah. and PG just carries the flavor so much better in a liquid. And so back in the day we could quit smoking and start vaping and instantly taste our liquids because of the PG content in them. And now we have a lot of VG in liquids, which doesn't carry the flavor as well. So yeah. I think if you're a fresh new vapor, it's just going to take time before you can really start tasting those juices in, in a big way. Yeah. Just because there's less PG and it doesn't carry the flavor quite as well. Exactly. Exactly. No. Um, <clears throat> now, there's been a few questions about coils. I know Teus asked if there was going to be a uh, Gargoyle Hoof V2 come out. Gargoyle. Oh, yeah, the Gargoyle Hoof. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a fantastic. Dude, you know, I would love to do one of those again with Dwayne. The great, the great thing about those videos is it was literally just all improv. Yeah. Like, we just sat down and and shot it and just made it up as we went along. Um, it's been harder with Dwayne's in uh, Vegas now, so he's yeah. he's like a six hour drive for me now. Um, but he's coming back to California, and I think when he comes back to California, we're definitely going to do another just game changing coil build video. Fantastic! We'll have to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Your um your kind of favorite build used to be like the Ruby build. So kind of um yeah. like eight wraps of twenty-four over two and a half mil or something like that. I I still use the Ruby build. It's I use the Ruby build on my single eighteen six fifty squonkers for some reason because it performs so well. Yeah. In in most other applications, I'm I'm kind of an M Turk fanboy a little bit. I love his alien coils. They're just they're just great. They're just my favorite coils. Yeah. And M Turk, you know, he's such a uh, he's such a perfectionist. He's so skilled at making coils that uh, shortly before ECC, I put a, I took out a pair of his coils and we put it in the twisted messes. And on the packaging, it said they were supposed to be 0.17, mm -hmm. and they were 0.17 on the nose, like after glowing them and pinching and stroking and everything. Yeah, 0.17 on the nose. 
And I just was, I just, my mind was blown. I was like, how does Turk do that? Yeah. Just 0.17. These will be 0.17. And they were. And that's why I trust Turk to build Absolutely. my coils. And he's a super nice guy as well. I've met him once or twice yeah. now, I think. Such a super nice guy. I think he's going to be at Vape Jam this year as well. So you might have another chance. But he's, yeah, he's a genuinely just good person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're being asked about the uh, a rough price in the UK and Europe for the uh, for the rage. I imagine if it's a hundred dollars, it'll pro it'll be probably between ninety and a hundred pounds. I would have thought, right? Uh, yeah, probably between ninety and a hundred pounds, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not um, going to be crazy. Nut Chunder, which is just a fantastic, brilliant, <laughs> good one. <laughs> Speaking of new vapors, what do you think about Matalung RDAs becoming more available and cheaper? Um, do you think it's a it's a thing? Do you think that new vapors are going to get into Matalung RDAs once they get into that hobbyist side of things, or do you think they're going to go um, kind of wow, that's clouds tough. By clouds? That's tough. That's a really tough question. Um, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to know unless I try some of the mouth to lung RDAs. Um, I have a feeling they would work well on squonkers yeah. and not so well with dripping or with a lot of other applications. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know how easy they are to drip on. If there's a good mouth to lung RDA out there that you can easily drip on, I would, I would fall in love with that. Yeah. I would love that. If I could rock a mouth to lung RDA on my Mac yeah. and just drip on it, yeah, I think with that a would proper be old school, like kind of 0.7 coil on it or something. Yeah, just install. Yeah, I mean, it's very old school to have to adjust your resistance that way, but I like mechs, so I kind of put up with it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I am absolutely loving parallel 26 gauge stainless in mechs at the moment. I, it just it rocks my world. I make my Claptons with those all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, do you ever actually make your own claptons? So I know you've done a couple of videos. You did a really great oh. kind of tutorial at one point in time. Do you do you yeah. ever kind of go? Can I still make them? And then just uh, have a blast? it's it's been uh, it's been a hot minute since I've made any coils. Yeah. You know, I, I still have my drill. I still have my swivels. I still have my clamps and everything I need to make claptons. And I used to really enjoy it because I I liked vaping on a clapton that I created. It was yeah. really satisfying. You know. Um, I just don't have the time really anymore. And when you have friends like Kent or coil turd or twisted messes yeah. who get, have a constant supply of these beautiful handcrafted coils, <laughs> it just, even just looking at them next to the coils that I've made, it's, it's like a night and day difference. Mine aren't, mine are not good enough to compete with M Turk in any way. <laughs> No, and aliens, they've, they've been my Achilles heel for so long. I am yeah. making aliens. Yeah, I, I can't do it. The alien is the one that I couldn't do. And I set my I, I set a goal for myself one day. This was like a year, over a year ago, well over a year ago. And I put Dwayne's alien tutorial on YouTube. Yeah. And I had my drill and I had everything. And I was following his tutorial exactly. And I thought, I'm going to do this. I'm going to build some aliens. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's it was like when a, they, it when was they a train out the wire and they just go put some of that and you go right i think i was following squid dudes ages ago when i was the first time i tried it yeah and he was like yeah pull it out and you'll you'll know well <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> you'll know you'll just know you'll know <laughs> no bro <laughs> i couldn't do it um christopher egger about the thug life we answered your question earlier on so someone's not paying attention oh <laughs> just picked the wrong time to go out for a piss um dino a night again question for nick please what new music is he listening to at the moment and is he going to see slayer on their final tour um i do i do really want to go see slayer on their final tour not necessarily because of slayer like i love slayer i've been a slayer fan since i was 13 yeah. i've been listening to slayer i'm 40 now i've been listening to a to slayer for a real long time yeah so i'm all good with slayer like i've punched my last slayer concert ticket i'm good i really want to see anthrax because anthrax and behemoth are opening up for slayer and i'm really much more excited to see anthrax because i've never seen anthrax but i definitely i do definitely want to go slayer that would be awesome Anthrax so were the bollocks back in the day. God, I love Anthrax. I've never got to see them, and it really bums me out because they're one of my favorite bands. 
just ever of all time. Love yeah. Anthrax. Love me I some Anthrax. The problem I had with Slayer right back in the day was 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 because I was playing in bands and stuff when I was kind of in my in my teenage years um, and early twenties. I think it was because their their production values were always a bit shit. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's dirty, <laughs> dirty thrash metal. That's yeah. you don't need good production. And then when Machine Head came on, that was like, oh, that's yeah, special. Oh, um, Machine Head. But uh, but no, Metallica and uh, and Anthrax and uh, Sepultura. They were another one that were were badass, but production shite. <laughs> I yeah, I've always I've loved Sepultura. I've always loved Sepultura. They're just one of those bands I really like. I like I like a lot of those old metal bands you yeah. know like i like old testament i like anthrax i like overkill i yeah. like uh, slayer i like a lot of that old thrashy stuff yeah i listen to it a lot it's a big part of my you know growing up and listening to music was like and, and the only reason i was really listening to it back then is i mean obviously i enjoyed it but it really does work real well at pissing off the parents <laughs> like nothing like megadeth at full volume when you're in an argument with your parents it's great <laughs> and that's why you know <laughs> cliche to fuck out of it but it works. yeah exactly so cliche but i mean that's why that's why i liked it i like loud aggressive music the garage days ep from metallica was genius by the way just for that particular reason oh yes yes <laughs> yes there's one yes. song in there that that, that yes oh uh, was it fuck that fuck this Fuck something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. So, uh, that that is the class one, just to piss off everybody. Yes, <laughs> love it. A um, few quick questions before we finish up. Been going a little while now. Your grim, any first thoughts on the Squid Vape Tac Twenty One Twenty One Seven Hundred mod? I've not, uh, I've not tried that. Uh, yes. So I don't have a finished version though. That's that's my that's my disclaimer for this. I have one of the prototypes he gave me at ECC. Uh, my door is, is wobbly, which I know they fixed. There's another, there's a couple other weird things that I know they fixed. I really like it. I don't know if I like it more than the dual 18650 one, just because like we were talking about earlier, the 20, 2700 batteries are substantially bigger. So it yeah. feels like you're holding, it's a little bit beefier. It's a little bit more honking of a mod that you kind of have to put up with, yeah. but it's got that same double barrel look, double barrel chip, same toggle with the wattage and the fire button. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's, it's going to be a good version of the, of that mod. I just don't have a, a finished product yet. So I can't, yeah. I don't want to say, you know, it's yeah. great or it's terrible because I don't have the finished version. <laughs> and once again, I'll be down to putting the cells in it as well. Getting the, uh, getting some big good cells will, will, yeah. will help that massively. Yeah. I yeah. 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 So that answers Matt. Now then, E30 Birdie, I think you're, are you a BMW driver, E30? Um, can you ask Nick and crew, will if, I think it's, if Nick and the crew will make it to the Hall of Fame in Stuttgart, you're not going to Germany, are you? Uh, no, I, I'm not making it to Germany. There's a Germany show that I was considering going to, but I don't think I'm going to make it to Germany. No, I think one of them does completely conflict with either Jam or Expo. I can't remember which one it is, so. Yeah. That might be that one. Now, is there any other final questions before we go get them in ever so quickly? Oh, and the misfits. That's there you go. Dave Mottram's mentioning the misfits. Oh, misfits. Yeah. Oh, Glenn yes. Danzig. He no, he's mentioned. Yeah, he's out of his mind. Yeah. <laughs> he's actually out of his mind. It's great. In fact, when we were in, uh, I went to Sweden last year, which was one of my favorite trips ever to Sweden for the Beyond Vape uh, Vape Fest event day. It was a one day thing. And uh, Matthias from Beyond Vape Sweden hired a Misfits and Danzig cover band to play. And so we were all in Sweden outside, all vaping, listening to a Misfits cover band. And I was like, <laughs> this is fucking great. Like <laughs> this is the peak I have peaked. This is the pinnacle of awesomeness hanging out in Sweden with a bunch of vapors watching a misfits cover band. It was my favorite. <laughs> now so one fun. last question that I just want to throw in because obviously you've been in the game for a long, long time now. Sure. Cause you're an old man, even though I'm old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because you've been doing it for a long time. Obviously there's a lot of famous non vape famous, but actual famous people out there in the world. Yeah. Now. Um, the vape. Um, why do you think that they no, nobody ever comes out and says 
that they're vaping. You know, they're all kind of dodgy paparazzi shots of someone holding a rip. And why do they all have shit equipment as well? Yeah, I don't know. You know, some of these celebrities need a personal vaping assistant. I, yeah. I offer those services. If anybody's watching, Katy Perry, if you're watching, I can get you much better vape stuff. Um, I don't know. A lot of it, I, I think a lot of it is they kind of feel a little bit ashamed of it. Yeah. I think a lot of it is it's not necessarily that they don't want people to see them vaping. I think it's that they don't want people to know that they smoked. Yeah. Because a lot of celebrities, you know, unless you're James Dean or, you know, one of these old timey celebrities that always smoked, it's kind of like you don't want it. You don't want people to know that you're smoking. A lot of smokers in America are very uh, embarrassed, I guess, or like self-loathing, like, Oh, I smoke and it's a gross, dirty habit. Yeah. And so when they pick up a vape, you kind of know, oh, well, they used to smoke. <laughs> Katy Perry used to smoke. That's weird. <laughs> so I think that's kind of a lot, you know, the public image yeah. thing of celebrities. I mean, and there's a few cele I mean, celebrities, there's a few famous people that are pretty upfront uh, about their vaping. Um, Dave Navarro, who was, you know, uh, Jane's Addiction, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Dave Navarro. Yes. He's he's a very outspoken sort of like yeah I, I vaped to quit smoking and he always if he's ever in a, on a public show or speaking to the public he always defends vaping he's like no vaping works it worked yeah. for me yeah he's a, and he's a hardcore like I stand up for vaping type of guy and that's really rare yeah <laughs> absolutely really rare. I don't, have you ever kind of tried to reach out to people in the public eye to see if they can because it, obviously if 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 someone like a vape reviewer on youtube gets a well-known person to start talking about vaping that's going to help kind of exposure yeah. for for vaping as a whole yeah. um have you ever reached out to anybody for that or you know just been told to fuck uh, off and you know, or like that? i haven't I, i've tried to reach out to uh uh, uh phil defranco a few times just to see if he would want to discuss vaping on his Phil DeFranco show. I've reached yeah. out to the H3H3 podcast because I know they vape. They vape a lot. They're vapors, but they do it really, uh, really kind of tongue in cheek. Like yeah. they make fun of it while they do it. Yeah. But yet they all vape, but they all kind of make fun of it as they're doing it. Yeah. And so I've reached out to them. Um, honestly, it just kind of, sometimes people just reach out to me without even, I, I don't even know who I'm talking to sometimes like the singer, uh, Randy Blythe from lamb of God. He emailed me because he's a vapor. Yeah. And so we've been emailing for like three years now. I just sent him a bunch of recoil rebels, but he's a vapor and he doesn't really put it out there, but he reached out to me, Yeah. which I thought was really bizarre, but he's not one of these guys that really like, likes to talk about it or, or show it off or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. But, I think yeah. that would be cool if we can go. The problem with H3, with that Vape Nation video, oh, it's a fucking nightmare. It is. It is. It <laughs> so is. And that's the thing is they vape. Like, Ethan vapes. Yeah. He's a vapor. But they're always, he, he, he does it very, like I said, tongue in cheek, kind of makes fun of it while he's doing it, yeah. you know? And so I've tried to reach out to them a few times, but, you know, look, I get it. They're busy. They're, they're, they're big, much more popular people. You know, yeah. if I can barely keep a grip on my own emails, I don't know how other people like that can do it. I mean, it's it? yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> right. Well, oh, talking about music, obviously, are we going to have any more music videos featuring you, giving it some beans in the near future? <laughs> you know what? I don't know. I don't know if there's ever going to be a music video. What I would like to do is another, I don't know, I don't know if anybody saw mine and Kent's uh, very sweet trick video that we put yeah. up on Instagram, but that was a lot of fun. I would really like to do one of those with Dwayne. I think that would be uh, just hilarious. Yeah. But uh, as far as like actual music video goes, no, I'm, that's uh, <laughs> that, that was a weird day for me. I know what music video we're talking about. And that was a real weird day for me. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be pouring VG over someone though. That's, yeah. uh, that's just I a did weird. not expect to be pouring VG on a woman when I woke up that morning. <laughs> It looked, it did look like it was great fun, <clears throat> but no, I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty much us covered. I think we've, we've done a whole bunch of gone for over an hour and a half now. So I think that's going to be more cool. than enough. Um, so now when, yes. when I have Todd on the show, obviously he's on with his, uh, with his, um, 
uh, he's away with his wedding anniversary at the moment. He's yes. over in Spain sunning himself. Yes. Very cool. Um, I have a I have a, a, a very sort of specific request, which I'll I'll come to in a second. Um, okay. But is there anything you wanted to say to the to the to the the UK people? Uh, no, I mean, thank you for coming and hanging out. Thank you for having me on, Dean. Uh, I'm going to be there for Vape Jam UK. Really excited about it. Me and Ruby Roo are going to do another panel, uh, you know, sort of live Q and A thing. Um, we're going to record it for our podcast. I, I don't know. I'm just real excited to come over to the UK. Excellent. Thank you for all the support, you know, all that Thank stuff. You very much. Thank you very much for coming on. Now oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Okay. What do we do? What do we have to do? At the end of my videos, I take oh. a big old lung inhale and then okay. I say, just before it comes out, have it large. Now. Okay. So, <laughs> so in, in, have it large. Yeah. And okay. then fly to camera. Okay. <laughs> Is this gonna make me cough? Is this like a practical joke you're playing no. right now? Okay. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do a practical joke for you. So, um, before you do that, thank you ever okay. so much for everybody that's been watching, and thank you very much for everyone that watches this on the replay. If we didn't get to your questions in chat, then I apologise, but I did try to cover as many of them as humanly possible. Um, as always, if you do want to support the channel, then you can go and hit up my Patreon if you want to see some kind of previews and unboxings and first thoughts and all that sort of good stuff thank and uh, occasional live hangouts for, for certain tiers and all that sort of jazz. So thank you so much for all the continued support um, up to this moment in time. And uh, we hope to uh, carry on in a wonderful vein moving forward, drama-free and stress-free and lots of vaping. Yes, I like that. <laughs> okay then right then mr grim so the camera is on okay. you sir so Wh what am i supposed to say have it big have it large have it large yes but loudly I feel, like, I feel like i'm getting pranked but i'm gonna go with it anyway oh no, you got it this is what i do at the end of all my videos so it's gotta <laughs> suck it in and so now are you have sure it that, large you know, what what did you say oh, God. <laughs> why are you doing that <laughs> Why are you doing that? <laughs> no, God, this time do it properly <sighs> and I will do it with you. My friend. Okay, let's do it. So here we go. Have it, Have it large. large. <laughs> <laughs>